You want to experience comic culture and sales. Streaming live daily to Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. Hey, there you are. Hope you guys are hanging out with us tonight because we've got a jam-packed night tonight. We've got a special guest. He just wrapped up his uh, third issue of uh, Annabelle yesterday. Mr. Todd Rayner is here tonight. We are happy to have him. And on the auction block, fresh from the Dracula 1944 campaign, all the way from Hawaii, Nay, our good friend Connie Jolitz is also with us here tonight. And backing her up, uh, con favorite local artist here in uh, L.A., Mr. Sean Linehan is also here. So like I said, a lot is happening tonight. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this short, brief intro. Hey, good to see you here, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, dropping by. I see Jewish Dragon, Derek Neiman, and Kenneth Bird. If you guys, uh, uh, I don't know if you're as old as I am, but if you used to watch the, uh, this, um, um, kind of forget, I don't know what kind of show you call it, but it was called, this thing called Romper Room, you know, where the host would come on, I see, I see Derek, I see Kenneth, and she'd hold like, like this mirror or something, like a magic mirror. I feel like that's what I'm doing. But anyway, thank you guys for uh, coming and joining us tonight. Don't forget um, to hit that follow button and uh, help us uh, reach our next goal of uh, 3,000 followers so we can uh, bring, continue to bring you uh, wonderful content like our show and Nick Brucci's original uh, art show every Friday is at 7 p.m. Okay. And of course, uh, you know, we like to do giveaways and we definitely have more of those tonight. And uh, we got some pretty good ones here. So if you want to get in on that, Put in pound sign EXP Annabelle, okay, and that will get you rolling into the uh, uh, those free giveaways, okay. And um, you know the sad news that we got uh, earlier this week is that Trina Robbins uh, passed away, and um, that was a lady that Mog was. Uh, uh, she just got to meet recently, so it was kind of sad news. But in tribute tonight, uh, Mog will be drawing uh, Wonder Woman uh, for a. Uh, in tribute for uh, Trina. So the starting bid on that is $50 if uh, you guys want to jump in on that. Anything else going on with you, Mark? Um, that you want to share? Uh, same, nothing much. Okay, nothing much, okay. Well, I know that some people were asking to see that big commission that you're working on. So we do need uh, to sh show that. Yeah, uh, uh, later. Okay, okay, you're you're gonna do that later. Okay. Because I'm working on this, and then that means I have to switch the camera. And... All right. So we'll try to see if we can get that, Lisa, on on the next break. All right. So let's bring out our uh, special guest uh, tonight. Um, like I said, he just finished the uh, Annabelle campaign. He had a successful run on that, and that's the third issue that he's done on that. So that's a a, a good thing. Welcome to Stevie B. Glad to see you are in the house. <laughs> So, uh, Todd, how do you how did that uh, campaign uh, go for you? Did that? Oh, did we lose Todd? Yeah, he, he just kind of dropped out of my screen okay. there. Okay, all right. Well, we'll uh, get back. Uh, oh, oh, there he is. <laughs> no idea what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> what a great start! All right, all right so yeah, you question. just finished that uh, third campaign of yeah. uh, Annabelle. Um, how did that go for you? It went and we could. Okay, yeah, it was good. it was a good campaign. I know you've got some uh, uh, great artists that you're uh, working with uh, on there in that mm -hmm. uh, uh, series on because I saw you had uh, Fabio Simao in there, you had Greg yeah. Watson, uh, you had uh, Courtney Rose as well. You know those are names that a lot of us are familiar with in the uh, independent uh, independent uh, market. So that was good to see uh, you've got that uh, going there. Um, and we'll get back to that, but let me bring out some of the uh, other people, other artists that we have here. Uh, Connie Jolitz is uh, here tonight. Hello. Hey, Connie. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? All right, so what are you going to be working on uh, tonight? Well, I was uh, thinking about a uh, Trina Robbins tr uh, tribute as well. I was on the same um, <clears throat> panel that uh, Mom oh, yeah. was in on Molly. That's right, and, that's right. Uh, you guys were lucky enough to... Um, 
get on that panel with Trina. And, and she was, was so welcoming. That was a remarkable I, experience. I yeah. was uh, uh, telling her about the comic that we were working on and uh, 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 the comic that I had started with, uh, like a coffee related uh, um, zombie book. Yeah. And she was like, oh, that idea, idea is wonderful. It's like snakes on a plane, you know? <laughs> <laughs> she looks so amazing. So yeah, yeah was, and, you know, uh, she's always been uh, supportive of uh, women uh, in in the industry, no matter like what role you had, um, particularly on yes. the uh, creative side as a writer and artist, which is what she was. Uh, I've followed her through the years. I've been to a lot of uh, her, uh, her panels and visitor uh, at the tables and stuff uh, through the years, and I remember seeing her dressed up as Red Sonia in the oh 1970 my. comic books that uh, they amazing. were putting out. And that's how I found out about like San Diego Comic. I go, man, I got to get to this show <laughs> <laughs> just to meet this lady playing Red Sonia because Conan was my, is my, was my favorite book <laughs> at that time. But yeah, she, wow. had, she definitely had, a, a, I, I think, a good career. And it, it was good, good to see her. Sad to hear her passing, but yeah, she definitely and had also, a And it was so a short time ago, the uh, um, the Maui Comic Con was only what, four yeah. months ago, so it it's, must uh, have been. No, yeah, uh, I know because like uh, they were, like Mog was planning to go see her in San Francisco later this year because she lives up north, and so that was uh, you know we were looking forward to that, but now now it's, that's not going to happen. But um, all right, so you're doing uh, what's it? I'm uh, doing Vampirella. Vampirella. Okay, yes. you already. Oh, it shoots. You already got a lot on there. Well, actually, that's the, uh, oh, damn it, it's really okay. bright. So here we go. All right. And uh, you're starting that at uh, $50? Yes. Okay. So, and that's uh, eight and a half by 11. Uh, that's nine by 12, actually. Oh, nine by 12. Better yet. Nine by 12, yeah. guys, starting at 50. Okay. So if you want to bid on that, go ahead and put that into the comments. And then we do take uh, uh, bids after that um, at uh, $5 increments. And, yeah, um, so the reason why I chose Vampirella is that uh, I just found out not too long ago that Trina actually designed the uh, the costume and the hairstyle. That's right. She did the yeah. costume and the hairstyle for that. Yes, and it's uh, so uh, iconic. Everybody who's drawing her always, like, you can always uh, know that it's Vampirella just by looking at the costume. I see, yeah, else, I know, and, with, uh, yeah. with boots and everything blends into each other, but the costume is always remaining yeah. iconic. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And the thing was, I remember there was, like, discussions about it um some somebody some people a person had like brought up of course vampire looks like that and has that kind of costume what do you expect when it's designed by a man <laughs> well, <I> mean... <laughs> to their surprise uh excuse me <laughs> okay steve yep. is asking connie is that a cat at the top left of your window oh yes actually it is I don't know what it is about this show. We always we we always talk about cats. Cats <laughs> come into the discussion somehow. You can clearly tell that he's not. I'm not even a cat lover. I don't hate them, just, but I'm not. You know, I'm more of a dog lover. <laughs> Although I find myself spending less time with dogs these days, and somehow being around cats more often. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, All right, so Connie's that. drawing Vampirella. Mm -hmm. Bog is drawing Wonder Woman, and um, Sean, yeah, coming up here. What is I'm Sean drawing, working on today? I'm drawing Magic from Magic. Yeah, and I'm Very I'm going magic. live on Instagram for the first time, so people oh. are joining it, and it's really odd. Uh -huh. I didn't expect that. So people who join, uh, check out my latest posts, so then you can get on to this show that I'm on. With Mog and Mel. Right. And Catch if up. you haven't seen lately, Sean has been posting up some incredible uh, pieces of art in the last couple of weeks. And you can find him on uh, Instagram. And uh, you've been posting stuff on threads as well, if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah. Yeah. I've been doing all yeah, the So you can find lately. it on, on there as well. Okay. And I see some people already putting in the pound sign uh, EXP Annabelle. And that's what you need to do if you want to get qualified for those giveaways that we will be doing later on tonight. All right. And uh, once again, don't forget to hit that follow button. Uh, help us increase our, our fellowship here. Okay. And um, let's get back to Todd now. Uh, Todd, uh, I think you said that you're going to be working on a sketch cover. Yeah. Uh, it's actually a ice pick sketch cover. 
going um, on a nice big sketch cover. And yeah, um, I started it, but it's very light, so <laughs> there's not much to see. No worries, no worries. Well, we'll we'll get back to that later. And uh, what was your starting bid on that? Uh, we'll go twenty five for the sketch cover. Twenty five. Okay, he's yeah. lowballing everybody. Going twenty five, guys. <laughs> Jump on that <laughs> now. Yeah, you, you know it ain't gonna last. <laughs> No. <laughs> and uh Mark, did we ever say what you were drawing? Oh yeah, that's right. We did Wonder Woman. We yeah. did say uh, Wonder Woman. And uh that is uh starting at 50, right? So go ahead and place those bids now. Okay. All right, so and Todd, I mean, mm -hmm. where are you located? Seattle. Seattle? Yeah. A little north, oh. but Seattle ish. Okay, but you went. Uh, wow, you've been kind of like all over the place because you were you're originally from Ohio. I am. Yeah. Well, me and my wife. So about twelve years ago, we. Long story short, we packed up our car, whatever fit we took with us to Seattle, and just moved out here. Drove across country, <laughs> no jobs, no house, just our cat and our car. Cat. And um, uh, where were you coming from then? Uh, Cleveland. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And and then you went to school in. Uh, was it in Ohio? In, yeah. In, oh, that was in Ohio as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, wow. Okay. Yeah. So you bounce from, you're bouncing uh, from like one end to the other to the next and stuff. How long have you been in Seattle now? Uh, about 12 years. Yeah, oh, so. okay. So you've been yeah, there quite a while. Yeah. It's definitely home. Okay. Uh, what, what part of Seattle? Uh, actually, north of east, northeast ish of Everett, right by Granite Falls. So anyone familiar like Granite Falls is. Like kind of a nice highway that takes you up to camping and some of the mountains and stuff like that. So we're we're nice and secluded for the most part. Oh yeah, that that is a nice area. I I have uh, been there uh, mm -hmm. just for uh, just for a little while, uh, yeah. uh, just for like a one day uh, trip. But yeah, that that is very very nice out there. I do like it out there. So I yeah, see why you did I did that. Yeah. All right, okay. So you've got um, Annabelle on your third issue here. Yeah. Your first uh, uh, Kickstarter on that, and the very first issue you, you did uh, fairly decent on, it. and then your second issue, really, you really got up there. Okay. Yeah. But now with this uh, third one, um, you, you got like fully funded, but it didn't do uh, quite as well. Uh, yeah. the, how do you feel about that? <laughs> uh, well, I think all of us want to do uh, extremely well on our Kickstarters, but um, you know, talking with other indie creators, I, I've Kind of felt like this was just the way it was for this kind of march april kickstarter a lot of uh, other kickstarters that i'm friends with you know other indie creators um a lot of theirs kind of underperformed a little bit so it wasn't like surprised but just you know we all want to do as much as we can on those um and it just helps but you know you live and learn and you know you kind of take what you can learn and, and move on to the next campaign Okay, yeah, because like I said, you did have some good art. You do have some good uh, artists uh, working on your books there yeah. Uh, yeah. that I saw. So I don't think like that's the uh, problem. Is there anything that you plan on doing uh, different for your next uh, campaigns? Probably less covers. <laughs> less I covers? I, I, yeah, I, what, what I, have, I think like seven covers or something like that for this one, six covers. Uh -huh. um, so... You know, I'm a fan first, so I like seeing what other artists, how they render my character, how they kind of handle that stuff. So I, I end up like asking more artists to do covers and it's like, oh, how do you draw this, you know, Annabelle or Ice Pick or whatever the characters I'm working on. Um, and it's always kind of a treat to see someone else uh, kind right. of draw your character. Right. And I, and I do see that at some uh, campaigns that are out there, right, man, they just got uh, they've got like a lot of covers on there, and mm -hmm. uh, I question if that's the right decision. I, I mean, I understand the desire to have so many covers yeah. out there, uh, and, and some of them go as high as like sixteen different covers, right? Yeah, and that's not even including the variants, you know, like the medals, the the risque or the the or mm -hmm. the naughty covers that go along with it. But just like sixteen right. alone, you've got like sixteen different artists. Um, the, the numbers aren't adding up. Uh, yeah. in, in there when you see it like uh, that much. And I know that's uh, kind of like a thing to to try and uh, uh, balance out right? because there's that desire to have that many, as much artwork as you can show. 
you know, to mm -hmm. make it look cool and everything. But at the same time, you've got to be concerned about your bottom line, you know, and uh, is that if you're going to like cut it. So I can I can see that uh, for you there. Now, um, is there anything else that you'd uh, like to do? Because, you know, like we see like other people doing like stickers or. Uh, yeah, I, I did that. So, and yeah, Annabelle. Not um, saying that that's I'm, a good thing to do. Because I'm yeah, still it, on the table on that. It's it, it really depends. Um, I'm on the fence. Like um, Annabelle's the second title that Dark Space Studio has published. First one was Ice Pick, and with that one, I did kind of more um, as far as like dollars go in Kickstarter than what Annabelle's doing. Um, different genre, so I, I felt like it just depends on the genre. It depends on the market, you know where it all kind of fits. But for that campaign, I did do stickers. I did like bookmarks. I did some of the other fun stuff with that. And, and maybe I get back into that, but um, we'll, we'll just kind of have to see. I'm, I'm still, I don't know, about 30% through issue four. So I have some mm -hmm. time to figure all that out. And I'm, I'm pretty much a one man show. Like I, I uh, for Ice Pick, I did all the, all four issues myself, write, draw, color, all that. Did the Kickstarters all by myself. Um, no, I mean, did I, I still RT. go through Kickstarter? Yeah, yeah, I did uh, issues three, four, and the definitive trade, which was like 160 some pages for a trade. Okay, was that because somehow I didn't see that listed there? It's, was it? Yeah, under another, another. It another? was. It was under like my name under Todd oh, Rainer okay. um, because that's what I started. I didn't start the business uh, as far uh -huh. as the studio goes for the last couple of years, so okay. I wasn't. It was kind of like a transition. I was like, went from myself. And and that could be why Annabelle is maybe not performing as well as Ice Pick because people are familiar with my name versus mm -hmm. the studio name. You know, so it's almost starting from scratch again. I see. Yeah, I, uh, I can see that happen. That's always a, a risk, too, when a company yeah. does change name. They're, you know, they're, that's one of the first things that questions that will pop up in their mind. Is it going to be a good thing? Will people be able yeah. to uh, follow us over? And you, you're definitely going to lose something. Uh, yeah, but I, you want to control how much of that loss is going to be. Right. And I don't think yeah. I've lost really that much, um, you know, as being just a small indie publisher, you know, mm -hmm. you're, I'm not doing huge numbers on, on Kickstarter. So it's kind of like a one man show. And, and the people that like my art and like the stories that have read Ice Pick and, and Annabelle is in Ice Pick. So people are familiar with that character. I think a lot of those people migrated over anyways. Not yeah. Okay. So, and, um, but you went to school. That was a, that was like a what a graphic design school that you went to. Yeah, my my degrees in design and small business. Oh, okay. Now, is that what you do full time, or you or are you doing yes. this full time? Oh, this is the art is not my full time gig. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely uh, it's a it's a part time thing, and I like to keep it that way. It's a nice hobby. You know, you make a little income on the side. I, you know, I have a very supportive wife and, and I do some conventions local to Seattle. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely a, a side project, like so what, many of us. What is your favorite convention? To be an artist at or to attend? Overall. Yeah. I've never been to San Diego, which I hear it's kind of like absolutely bonkers and crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've been to Emerald City and um, early 2000s, Wizard World was big, yeah. and Chicago was really big. Yeah. Um, not C2E2, but when they had, like, well, now it's something else. Uh, Fan Expo, right. I think it is. Yeah, Fan Expo took over, right? So yeah. Wiz Wizard took over. Um, it used to be uh, just called the Chicago Comic Con. Yeah. Um, and it was a kind of like a small con there, but you know, building up steam as it, it got, went through like the nineties. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I went to that con in the early, early, early years, like the eighties and the nineties. And it, it was a pretty decent con back then. There wasn't that, that much cons uh, back then uh, anyway. Yeah. But, yeah. But, uh, well, yeah I, I, I'd probably say like Chicago when it was like early two thousands or Emerald city. Um, once we moved out to Seattle, we went to Emerald city a few years. And I'm like, this is bigger than Chicago. It was nice, but I have more fond memories of Chicago. Um, I, I've met a lot of the artists that are huge influences on me. Um, yeah. Michael Turner, rest in peace. You know, I got to meet him like a few times and my wife's a big fan of Michael Turner. So mm -hmm. it was good to meet him and, and just a lot of the familiar faces and, and artists that I grew up with. 
Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I have very fond memories of Chicago. It doesn't matter who was running at the time, whether it was yeah. Wizard or the original Chicago um, Fan Expo. Uh, uh, is 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 new, so I need to see what the transitions are going to be like. Uh, yeah. It hasn't been uh, that great uh, for us, so, but um, uh, we didn't go last year. We're going to go back this year and see how okay. that is this time. So I skipped it one year and see how it is, but we are going to C two E two next week. So, but that's our first time for for that one, and we'll see how. Yeah, that I hear it's good. Yeah, I hear it's good. Okay, but then now, see the thing is, in the previous years, right? They've had a lot of big names uh, at that show. Okay, but if you look at the list now, okay, the names there, there's a lot of good names there, but they're not as big as they were in the previous years. Yeah. Right? So this is where the shows start to like. You know they want to get a, a little bit more lean, right? And yeah, uh, when that happens, um, if they if that's a trend that you're gonna see, because I see the same thing happening at, at Emerald City. Okay, the list of the powerhouse names get less and less and less, right? Yeah, and that will impact your show. But that's the con, just trying to run a little bit lean, and then they'll they'll beef it up again to try and get the numbers back. But uh, while the numbers are are up there, you know they're gonna try and slip it back a, a notch and, and try not to lose a uh, uh, much right but that's that's a game that they play right and uh so we'll see like how that is um and see how uh, that is able to uh if that has an impact for uh, with us the good thing is that we'll get to see some people that we haven't seen in in a, in a while uh because they had dropped out of the um the other chicago show yeah because when Wizard had it, uh, they were losing uh, artists. Uh, they just didn't want to do that show anymore because it just wasn't uh, uh, doing it uh, for them. So there was <laughs> quite a bit of artists that were uh, that are kind of local in the area that we don't see. So we that'll be kind of cool to see them again. Um, yeah, and that's the struggle. Whenever uh, you know, even like Emerald City in, in Seattle, been a local artist out here for the last ten years. I mean they're curated shows and they don't always have the local artists. So the bigger shows, you know, a lot of the local people get left out. Right. Yeah. So, you know, and that's kind of like the difference between like read pop and fan, fan expo. They have, mm -hmm. the way how they curate their shows is different from one another. Uh, one of the things that fan expo does, which I like is that they do try to bring in more of the local artists to try yeah. and uh, fe feature them, you know, cause those are the guys that uh, they can they have a better chance of developing a relationship with. Mm -hmm. uh, Fan Expo is a little bit different. You know, they'll curate like a little bit uh, differently. Now. But they've got a new guy that's uh, um, kind of handling some of that now. So it, 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 yeah, so it might change again how it gets uh, curated. So we'll right. see how that goes. All right. So we do have a bid. On uh, your piece, Todd, you get oh, nice. you get the first bit of tonight from uh, Stevie B. He says, uh, "I know a good deal when I see one." So he's <laughs> he placed that bit on there really quick. Uh, thank you for that. Um, appreciate it. Uh, and I do appreciate the people that we have here that come in uh, uh, watch us uh, every night because they they have been uh, very very supportive of us uh there's hardly anything that uh doesn't get sold so <laughs> we do like that and i got you down on it so if you want to place a bit on um on todd's piece so he's doing a, a piece on uh, his uh, ice pick uh cover uh, black sketch cover bid is currently at 25 and we are happy to receive the next bid of uh 30. who else do we have here in the house uh i did say stevie b He's in there. Thanks again for uh, coming on. Steve Vendetta, Kenneth Bird is in the house. Thank you guys for dropping by. All right. Okay, so we're going to uh, take a little bit of a break here, but let's take a view of what you guys got going on right now. You can see Mong's piece right there. She's doing a Wonder Woman. And we are looking uh, for, oh, that's coming out really nice. Looking for an opening bid of 50 on that. And I'm pretty sure you're gonna get that. And here, oh boy, she she went all vamp on that. <laughs> and, I'm uh, sorry that the lighting is a little bit off there. Uh, uh, yeah, we I can see it though. So the, and that is looking good. Okay, so now what kind of bear is that? 
That's more like a cub. So he's kind of like a little play, playful. Cold <laughs> That's <bleeding>. a cub. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, we are looking for an opening bid of 50 on that. So if you want to bid on that piece, go ahead and put that in the comments. And this is magic from Mr. Sean Lanahan. Yep. Nice. I also have these other pieces. Right. So we have, uh, let's see if I can turn the light on. Yeah, there we go. Spider-Man 299. Yeah. We got Link from Breath of the Wild. We got nice. Appleseed. Right? Oh, that's a good one right nice. there. And then we have uh, Death Dealer by Frank yeah. Pizzetta. Cool. Yeah, that was fun. And what are those at? Those are going to be uh, 50, and then for Magic, it's going to be 80. Okay, opening bid on Magic is $80. So if you want to place a bid on that, put that in the comments. And if you want to place a bid on uh, those pieces that Sean did, uh, run by run those again, uh, Sean, just real quickly so we, can, we know what the names are. Or, J.D., did you get those already? Yeah, so I should we, have the names in there. So we got Death Dealer. Okay, you got, got Death Dealer. Appleseed. Appleseed. We got Link. Link. From Zelda. And then we have Spider-Man 2099. All right. Okay, there you go. If you want to place a bid on those opening. Oh, no, that's not a bid. You're just taking 50. Is that it? Yeah, 50 for those. Okay, there you go. So you can just claim those in the comments. And uh, that will get you uh, going on that. All right. Yeah. Okay, I see. All that is in the banner. Okay. And then Marg also has uh, her, her her pieces uh, as well. Uh, the first one, uh, Japanese spaghetti. This is a 18 by 24 canvas, and that is uh, 300. And I just, oh, God, I forgot I put the names on there. Okay, yeah. So there's that piece there. You got um, Ahsoka versus Darth Maul. Intense Western match. And Marg's version of magic. This is 11 by 14. 150 in color. White Queen is uh, 12 by 20. I think she did three different versions of that. That's the first one. And uh, one of her, Psylocke is like one of the characters that she does the most. Uh, this is one of the, uh, one of the ones that she's done. 200 bucks for a 12 by 18 on that. So if you guys want any of that, just claim that in the comments and those are yours. And on that note, don't forget to put in EXP Annabelle to get you qualified for the freebies coming on later on tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stay tuned. We will be right back after this short commercial break. Twitch, it's not just what happens when you have too many energy drinks anymore. Check out our content over there, too. To be continued. Three little words that hold the secret to the next great story. Three words that will thrill you, confound you, give life to new possibilities. Every variation of To Be Continued is a promise. A promise of adventure. A promise of excitement. A promise of unseen wonders and unexplored worlds. A promise that every issue you read makes you a part of a never-ending journey. And behind every page, there will be an unopened door waiting for you. This story to be continued at your local comic book shop. Visit ComicShopLocator.com today. local comic shop to add Battle Quest Comics to your pull list today.
Something is speaking to you. Buy more comics. Just at the edge of your perception. Buy more comics. Your senses fill with visions of vortices. 360 comics. Slowly drawing you to one thundering epiphany. 360 comics! 360 comics! 360 comics! The universe is telling you to shop with 360 Comics. Joe's got amazing stock from high dollar to five buck books from Silver Age to Modern, CGC, variant covers, and more. 360 Comics, every Wednesday at 9 Eastern, part of the experience. Hello, everyone. We seem to have uh, lost a Mel and a Mog <laughs> today. We have lost a Mel. Oh, there he is. <laughs> there we go. I try to make it quick. <laughs> but sometimes it's just a long one. Anyway. Um, so, Todd, do you have, uh, is there a website that people can go to to order your comic books? Yeah, it's just darkspacestudios.com. There you go. Darkspacestudios.com is where you want to go to check out uh, Ice Pick and Annabelle. So give us uh, the pitch on what uh, Ice Pick is about, because that's what you started out with. Yeah, it's uh, kind of a story, as most of us indie creators, it's a story of uh, a lot of love was put into it uh came up with the character when i was in high school but it's basically my uh kind of throwback to 90s superhero comics you know it's got a lot of crazy over the top action it's got revenge it's got um those types of 90s elements in it and it's a four issue limited series it is a complete story it, it doesn't start out with an origin story it, it just really gets you right into the action and you know Elevator pitch kind of is Ice Pick is a superhero that just recently uh, realized he's got superpowers. Um, he is out trying to find out who killed his parents and who left him for dead. And in typical superhero fashion, um, he got his superpowers from like a lab accident. So, um, you know, him and his buddy are trying to figure out what he can do and, and what is that extent. Um, and I throw in like a lot of supernatural elements. They travel to like the ninth circle of hell. They find out who's behind a lot of the, the things that have been going on. And, um, you know, his fiance Annabelle shows up mm -hmm. and, uh, it's just, it's a four issue, crazy 90s superhero mm -hmm. story. So what is, what, uh, what books or what comics or characters have inspired you to, to write this, uh, that ice pick series? A lot of the 90s stuff, um, Batman Spawn, um, as you can see, fan of Batman back there, but you know, um, Batman Spawn, Casey Jones, a lot of people have kind of picked up on the nod to like old Casey Jones because yeah. he has kind of a pseudo hockey mask, is, is his, uh, right, his mask, but um, you know, and it's it's very superhero ish, and Annabelle is kind of not necessarily so much superhero stuff. So I, I just kind of wanted to go in a different direction with that story. Yeah, because, you know, Annabelle is, uh, we always, uh, more so now, we anim we associate Annabelle with, like, the supernatural, you know, because of the Annabelle movie and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so are you a big fan of the supernatural and, like, X-Files and stuff like that? Uh, that actually is my favorite show. Uh, X-Files is uh, oh, by really? far my okay. favorite show. Um, supernatural is probably it. my second yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I love i love x files Dude, i was oh, yeah. watching the entire season 
I think mm-hmm. I'm on season six or something. Do you do yeah, that sometimes is... anyway? No, no, actually season three. Do you do that season where three, if you okay. like it, you are rewatch the entire season again from beginning to We're actually just now starting season one again. So I, <laughs> I guess it's coming. <laughs> How many times have you watched it already, uh, Connie? Oh, I can't even remember. That's what I thought. Mog, I can't even yeah. remember. Mog got me to start watching it. I literally just started watching it like this weekend. I was like, well, she said it's good. I'm going to start. It was one of those things it's, I was like, ah, I'm not interested in it. And now I'm, you know, just started yeah. getting into stuff like that. And I was like, which, which I'm kind of surprised, Sean, that you're not interested in that. Because I, I wasn't when I was younger. Um, now, because I hear the things that you talk about and stuff, especially yeah. with conspiracies and stuff. So that to me, that fits right into into your uh, uh, scope, you know. So yeah, I was surprised, surprised that, about uh, how much it. like esoteric and like freaking like uh, conspiracy abduction abductee stuff is actually mm-hmm. like really written into the stories. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. They, they pulled, pulled, like, there's a lot they pulled off, you know. And off it's the based off on. It's based on facts, and also, it's yeah, don't you feel like it, it was uh, ahead of its time? Yeah. Oh yes. Well, yeah, I think like uh, um, Millennium was uh, the only contemporary thing that was kind of a little bit like it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, do you guys have a favorite uh, uh, episode out of X Files? Oh, I have a few. Yeah, there's some really good ones. Um, Name some of uh, your favorites. Is it Arcadia? I like the one in Jerry the Bruckheim's one in... Last Repose. Yeah. Huh? That's one of my favorites. Yeah. Mom? What was that one? What was the premise of um, that one? That's about the guy who can see everybody's death. Oh, that um, was really good. Yeah, I love yes. it. Yes. I like and that it has one. a little fat stormtrooper. <laughs> yeah. You know what? And, there's a similar, <laughs> and Mulder asked him, well, why would you do anything? And he's like, now you're catching on. <laughs> you know, yeah. so I love him. That character was amazing. Yeah. 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 Um, I think I like that actor one... passed away not, not too long ago, too, didn't mm. he? Did he? Or am I just making that up now? Oh, interesting. Hmm. Interesting. What about you, Todd? What about? I, I like the um, season six, season four? I think it's four or six. Where there's there's several episodes, but um, Arcadia is probably one of my favorites. Where they are um, proposing husband and wife, and they they go into this like gated community, and there's yeah. the creature that's like underneath the dirt, and the guys like <laughs> doing stuff with the creature. I like, I, I like episodes where the characters don't necessarily they play like someone else besides themselves. Oh yeah, 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 mm-hmm. and so they're there, like there acting. Is, uh... But they're not big episodes with that too. Yeah, Mm -hmm. those are my favorites. Oh, there's there's this one episode that is sort of like uh, uh, the Rube Goldberg variant, I think it's called. That's uh, somebody Mm -hmm. with incredible luck and. uh, uh, um, That's the one. Yeah, that's the one that's similar to the uh, first one. The one, the one who can see death. You have that feeling. Um, What's the one with the? Yeah, I like the one with the genie as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Remember how she he wished for world peace? And then she's like, okay, and then she goes, ding. And then all humanity was gone. Everyone's gone. Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that was the best. <laughs> Katie wrote that was uh, the one with the one with uh, Peter Boyle, right? And and that was a big episode uh, back then when it came out. Cause uh yeah. to have him yeah uh, in there. Um yeah, that 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 I remember them we were talking about that episode. Uh, when it came out, and everybody was like talking about how cool uh, that was with Peter Boyle in there. Yeah, and JD said he passed away in 2006. Thank you for that. Judy. Yeah. So, all right. So um, that was that. And so we can see a little bit of that tie in. So now we come to Annabelle, right? Yeah. And uh, that's a spin off, right? Yeah. The idea with um, it, it, this is really involving, it didn't evolve until after issue four of ice pick where um i was like well what's next right as an indie creator you know as an artist we're always thinking about what's next and it took me a little while to kind of think about what i like to do what i want to do i want to keep making books well Mm -hmm. let me tell annabelle's story and in ice pick she is 
his fixed fiance, she doesn't realize that he survived the lab accident. So she's under the impression those first four issues that he is dead. Um, mm -hmm. And issue four kind of reveals that he's alive, issue three, issue four. So there's that moment where she's like, oh, you're alive. And I'm like, well, that would be fun for me to uh, tell her story. And since I'm a big fan of small cast movies and stories that take place like in a short time frame, mm -hmm. um, like J J uh, John Carpenter's The Thing comes to mind. Uh, and that was kind of an inspiration for how I write my stories. And it was just like, okay, I love supernatural elements. I, you know, I love a lot of these things. How can I mix it into this story? And it just kind of sat down and it, it really did write itself. Uh, the story is basically um, the day after issue four of Ice Pit. They finally can say, let's go back to our apartment, you know, like figure out what happened. Why, you know, did you not tell me you were alive type of thing? And she gets a call from her sister and it takes place in Washington. And so she's like, this seems important. I gotta go. And he's like, okay, fine. Um, so she gets, she drives away and she gets kidnapped by a ancient Sumerian dragon. <laughs> so you know, it like never ends. And so I, I, I like history as well. So for me, the story was like, what, you know, what kind of character can I bring in as, as a cool villain? And I love dragons. So I started researching dragons and come to find out her is actually the first dragon of mythology. Uh, what he was like the ancient Sumerians believed that he was a dragon. Um, he would sacrifice virgins, and there's this whole like oh. myth behind him and all that fun stuff. So I was like, I can work with that. Like I, I can <laughs> come up with something fun, and and that's what I ended up doing. So, um, and and this story reveals Annabelle's past. It reveals a lot about her parents. Um, it starts to dive into more supernatural elements um, and more history and kind of ghostly figures and things like that. So, you know, it, it's still a fun, self-contained four-issue miniseries story. So first of all, Sumeria, that's like Babylonian time, right? Yeah. yeah. So you're saying that they believed in dragons even back then? From the research I found, um, I, I mean, I didn't live back then, but I can say from what I read, um, yeah. a lot of the dragon lore is that they they believed in that type of thing. And whether it was a physical person, you know, because a lot of when we look up history and we start diving into what a lot of ancient cultures believed, they would blame supernatural things or blame you know, why is there storms and rain and lightning and tornadoes? Like they didn't yeah. know what caused that. They didn't know that it was like Earth's atmosphere or that there was science behind some of these natural disasters. So they would blame things. Um, oh, it's the gods are angry at us or it must be yeah. this dragon. Like why were there maybe, you know, people mm -hmm. dying in their culture? So they would say, oh, it must be this creature. You know, so a lot of ancient cultures had myths and legends that were just about things that they couldn't explain. So they would believe in something. Yeah, but well, what, what is interesting is that, yeah, because I've been kind of looking at some of that too. A lot of the ancient uh, cultures actually mm -hmm. had dragons, right? So yeah, how do you tie that uh, all together that all these different groups of people in, in different areas around the world uh, came up with dragons. You know, it's kind of like a big coincidence, um, you know. So yeah, yeah. So, so you know, but yeah, something to think about now. Ancient. I think Indian. it was in in China. They did yes. find a skeleton. No, it's called imagination. Jesus. That too. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Ancient yes. Indian. But again, that's a big coincidence. <laughs> yeah. Everybody came up with the same thing. Okay. Well, it's also possible that dinosaur bones were a little bit more common back right. then, and they just ground them up for some kind of esoteric shit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, and, and they did find um, a skeleton of a, what they believe to be a dragon, okay, in China, but it's mm -hmm. a very small one. Not, it wasn't very big at all. Okay. So, yeah. but they're saying that you know that 
uh, that species or whatever they're finding, they're defining it now as uh, as a dragon type uh, creature. Whether wait, it breathes wait. fire or not, we don't know. You know what? I take it back. So let's just say it is really ancient aliens. Are you saying <laughs> are you saying ancient aliens were dragons? Like, how is there a tie in between? No, I'm not saying we're not saying that. I don't think that's I, what they're saying I, at all. I'm just trying to say like. When there's a lot of those coincidences and things like that, they highlight things like that on the Ancient Aliens show. They do, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like, they do. yeah, yeah, like uh, I think there's but a you whole thing question about like, it. God and Dogo and all that mm-hmm. stuff. You know, wow. you, for yeah, for me, I would question it. How do you do that? You know, it's yeah, sure, it can happen. You know, there, there's that. Yeah, it's just the the possibility of happening it is 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 very high. You know, I saw a documentary that Mel made me watch. Um, <laughs> Good job, Mel. It was, it was about this Australian lady who wanted to encounter UFOs. Oh, and she yeah. was doing this meditative stuff, and then she encountered, supposedly. So when they say when they use the word encountered, I thought it's like up close and personal. But it's basically the far away in the star kind of, and you see flashing lights, that's all. But anyway, she was interviewing the actual lady who did the Annabelle, what's it, the haunted house with the Annabelle? Okay, mm. yeah. Yeah, and, and it, so she's the one, the whole movies and all the, in, you know, the franchise based on her story, her experience. So I was thinking, how is this Annabelle lady, you know, hiding with this, you know, and turns out, she kept going back to the site over and over again, the house, and they even actually lived there for quite a while, which was shocking. And um, it's, she, it, she believes it was um, aliens. Mm. It was UFOs, um, aliens, because she kept seeing multiple s- sightings of the UFOs, like hovering really close near the house, like passing by. It was just, yeah. Interesting. Hmm. So yeah, she attached herself to a group that uh um, the one the UFO, trying, I, I forget. The really that, big that, organization. Uh, <laughs> but they try to like yeah. summon UFOs know. in in the sky. And somehow they have a, a higher success rate than what anybody would, would believe. It's um kind of interesting, right? But there's also another guy, um who's been around for like a, a decades now, who, who kind of does the same thing. And the government has investigated him. Chris and Bledsoe. Every time, huh? Chris Bledsoe. There you really? go. Chris Bledsoe, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's able to do it successfully every time. Yeah. And um, hmm. it is, it's, it's amazing how he, how he does that. And, um, and he's trying to say what the message is and, and like what, what he's able to get from them, what he, what they expect from us. Interesting. Uh, something we're uh, checking into if you're uh, interested in something like that. Um, but yeah. <laughs> to the question, does he also stare at goats? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who knows? You know that pro- that government program, right, where they uh, were testing ESP. Yeah, and, uh, ESP. All this kind of yeah. Stuff. yeah. There's, there's nothing that they made that with George yeah. 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 There's people from that program who actually vouched for uh, Chris Bledsoe's Mm, yeah stuff when he says the government's involved uh there's a lot of people that are involved in the government in fact like i think it's one of the head ex-head because he retired from it uh that was head of the fbi he's been to chris bledsoe's house and like vouched they're good friends yeah they're good friends (laughs) yeah like chris bledsoe put out a book called ufo of god and one one of uh, yeah the intro two or three books he has now no, Chris Bledsoe only has one book out. Oh, okay. <laughs> but there's other books that are about him. Oh, okay. Or That's mention him, but yeah, uh, a lot. <laughs> but yeah, the FBI, the director of the FBI, uh, has like you know a whole intro at the beginning of his book. So I know Diana, Diana Pasolko, who is like in charge of religious, uh, not in charge, but she's a religious professor. She's been to the Vatican. She's like one of the few people that's allowed into the Vatican laboratory, or not laboratory, yeah. but library. <laughs> she's written him. She's or uh-huh. she's written about him and all this stuff. I could talk about this shit for hours. I'm not <laughs> going to. I'm not going open to open the right? floodgate. Yeah, yeah. I'm not <laughs> going to. But anyways, well, it's fun. Yeah, stuff. we're gonna have to save that for another episode, <laughs> specifically titled "Ancient Aliens." 
<laughs> it's a fun topic just to think about it all is. the possible, you, you know, know and, and there is there is so many people that know about that show and there's a reason why it has it's been running for so many seasons now and there's so many spin-offs and, and very similar shows that I mean it's like when you go to uh Amazon, right, to the Prime Video thing, it's like mm -hmm. half the stuff they list on there is all about uh, ancient aliens, UFOs, conspiracies. It's it's mm -hmm. all all together and you go, wow, <laughs> there's like so much material that's being put out now. N not you to know. burst your romantic bubble, Mel, but it could be just the AI algorithm knowing that you love that shit. I mean, I love that stuff. <laughs> So yeah. that um, it's just giving you all the prompts about it. Could be. It is okay, but then when I go into uh, other accounts and I, I see see that you know when somebody else has it open, uh, I see the same thing. You know, and um, I don't know. Maybe they're, they're doing the same thing too. But you know, I, it, it, it's amazing you. like how much they have. Uh, yeah, possibly. Short. Yeah. But but either way, it's. It's very a very interesting. Um, but the other thing is that it's when you talk to theory. people. Look at this group here that all know about it. Yeah. This group. This group here, who we have here, uh -huh. Todd, uh, me, you, Connie, and Sean. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if, if Connie is in <laughs> is in the conspiracy thing, but okay. Oh, they're out to get me. There you go. <laughs> that answers it. You She's know, a totally totally believer. She is a true believer. Connie? <laughs> the truth is out there. Really, Connie? <laughs> I believe anything. <laughs> oh my God! There's a lot of people, uh, Mug, um, that if they like X Files, okay, yeah. Well, because one of the aspects of uh, X Files is the conspiracies, right? And uh, and so if you like that show, you're going to be interested in stuff like this. How about you, JD? Let's hear from you. Let's get a consensus from it. And anybody else in the uh, out there in the audience who put in your yays or nays in the comments. Let's see like where you guys like stand since we got well, this, I, this uh, open already. <laughs> I would say that I am a, a, a staunch skeptic. So I'm not saying it's not aliens, but uh, I got to I see some proof. I got to see some proof. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. He's not convinced. Well, let's say yet. aliens. I don't think that uh, uh, there's humanoid aliens walking around because the chances of it being exactly ape like, like our, our physical being, is uh, uh, very, very low. But mm -hmm. uh, life in general, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, it's so when you out. when you say ape like, does that dis does that discount like the gray aliens? <laughs> well, they are humanoid the way that uh, they're always. Okay, all right. I just want to uh, uh, because uh, I just want to clarify that because some people draw a distinction between uh, like ape like gray aliens and, and, and gray or green. Mm. All right, and let's see. Uh, does I, I he think, also stare? The I okay. think uh, I'm similar that's a, to. That's a good one. <laughs> I'm very similar to JD, uh, but he says he says he's a staunch skeptic. I will call myself an open-minded skeptic, but <laughs> if that's, a, yeah, yeah. I, I'm open to reason. Give me reason and proof, dude. Anytime, mm. any day. Yeah. I'm not yeah. like gonna be narrow-minded about it. I'm open to be uh, disputed and then proven wrong or proven right. It doesn't matter. Uh, but the skepticism seems to never go away, uh, which is kind of the detriment to my life sometimes. And uh, let's see, yeah, that's about it. Thank you. I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, Mic drop. Yeah. Yeah. Always would, open to the possibility. Yeah. I would say the problem is, is that a lot of these people in the government are starting to come out and talk. That's the scary part. Right? Okay. In front of Congress. And yeah. they're like, they're taking an oath. And if they don't, if they, if they are proven as liars, right, and it proven as not telling the truth, they go to Fort Leavenworth for like a long time when you mm -hmm. lie to Congress, right? So they're these are people that have been vouched for, been like, yeah, this guy used to debrief the president on just typical intelligence things, and now he's wrapped up in this, and or this guy was a commander for an air wing, like in charge of other commanders, you know, and he used to fly for Top Gun, and he's seen stuff, you know, and he's reporting it. 
So like, that's what makes me go, well, what is it? And then people are like, well, it could be China or it could be Russia. Well, one, Russia would be using that stuff now. <laughs> Two, I mean, for China, like, I mean, they're our biggest competitor, but I don't think they've gotten that far because we're farther than them in a lot of other technical things. So then we would know because we watch China like a hawk. And I would know because I was in the Navy and I just retired in 2022. So to me, it's very like, it's it's a big loud bell being rung in a way because I was in the government and I'm like, we don't just do that, right? That's like sort of like, that's what's shocking to me. Um, so Well, what I would say to that is, it, it just means that they believe what they say. That doesn't mean that it's necessarily the truth. Okay, well, you know that the U.S. government now does uh, say that they're not they're not denying anymore. They're saying that they do exist mm -hmm. and they've opened up uh, uh, an agency, whatever you want to call it, that's to investigate this. But they've been doing that for a while now, mm -hmm. uh, since the fifties. Okay, but yeah. now they've got a new uh, 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 viewpoint on it where they are accepting that that does exist and they are investigating it. You've got like some really top government Ooh. officials. You've got the president, an ex president of Canada, that's coming out saying that they do exist. And he points his finger at the US and says that they need to come out and say what they have because he knows, he honestly believes that the U.S. has something going on uh, already, has made a connection with, with some sort of alien. But then they, they're also saying the same thing. People are pointing out uh, fingers at, at, at China as well, okay, mm -hmm. and Russia. They all uh, know the more. ex uh, high, uh, high intelligence officer of the um, Jewish intelligence, same thing. Another high officer in the... Israel. Uh, yeah. Yeah, of Israel, right? and then another high intelligence officer out of the other United Kingdom is saying the same thing as well. So it's it's one thing when you have like maybe an officer in the military to say something like this, uh, and they'll still dispute it. But it's kind of hard when you have these high uh, 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 government officials coming out and and saying it. Yeah. That's very fascinating how it seems like you and Sean seem to really uh, uh, like like the idea of people with authority or with credit. credit, credit. Well, we both worked for the government yeah. and, at some point, and I think we both know, like, you can tell, like, you can just tell, like, when it comes to military people, like, when they're BSing and when they're lying, even, mm -hmm. I feel like, uh, because we've seen it so much when we were in. And then when they're just like, yeah, that's straight up legit. No, like, no, no. Oh, but, man. <laughs> yeah. Like for me, uh, what I'm trying to say is it doesn't matter if you are people of authority or credentials. Uh, I'm the, the skeptic in me is saying I'm open to it. I want to believe it. OK, I'm basically a molder. Or, I mean, skull, Scully, or a molder, a molder. Yeah, I yes. want to believe. I want to believe. OK. But even Mulder, I think several times does this in the X Files, where he has to see it himself to believe it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's where sure. I'm at. That's it. That's all I I'm agree. saying. Yeah. Yeah. No. Are you guys like that? Where you you want you are totally open and you want to believe, and the facts are facts do line up. But now the final conclusion for you to absolutely believe is, you have to now see it for yourself. Is that where you guys are at, or are you guys beyond that? It's hard because there's just so many cases and yeah. there's just so many people at some point, you know, like if it was a court of law, right. And mm. there was like something where, you know, somebody robs a bank and then punches a lady in the face. And then you have like nothing but little kids who saw it, right. Say it wasn't caught on camera, but you know, the little, there's like seven little kids. Well, they're little kids and they haven't had life experiences. No. But then in a court of law, seven little kids could still mean a lot, you know, and most likely would get that person put into jail. Right. And we yeah. don't, there's no photos there's nothing. It's just what, what the kids say, yeah. you know, but there's seven of them. Right. Mm. So for this whole 
alien Isn't thing. Isn't that also how the Salem witch trials happened? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah, but, like that that was, but that was pressure. You know, that was okay. like religious pressure. I don't think right. well, these are older government people who aren't pressured by anything. If, no. if anything, well, they can they're, lose. They're, they're pressured by popular opinion. Like, yeah. no. to me, there's, there's no. two lines. There, there's like the UFO line, which is unidentified flying objects. We see those every day. Yeah. But then there's the other line of, is there actual intelligent life form from other planets? I would say there's a huge possibility just because of the sheer size of the universe. But I don't know if the U.S. government is hiding aliens, <laughs> as in green, gray aliens running around with flying saucers. I, 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 mm. That is yet to be determined. Who's that one guy? Um, Bob. Um, Bob Lazar. Uh, huh? Bob Lazar. Yeah, Bob Lazar. Yeah, Bob Lazar is right. Who makes that claim that um, they're wake, the right. U.S. is uh, working with one already. And, he, and there was another guy, another engineer. Uh, that came out of who, who uh, backed that claim as well. So kind of interesting, right? So when people come out like this and they make to make that claim, you you got to think making a claim like that is going to make you look insane. Like a fool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> insane. So, and there's not going to be any doubt about that. So yeah. you have to question, why would you do that? Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Something but like when it's like a nobody, yeah, that's. But when it's like somebody who is the head of the FBI at one point saying, "Yeah, it's all true," then you mm-hmm. got to go, "Wait, what? Yeah, what are you saying here? Right? Are you oh, insane? This, yeah, this no, guy. Really, are you insane? This guy used to be a commander of an air wing. Wait, what? <laughs> this guy used to be the head of defense of Israel. Hey, wait, what? You know, yeah. like." Like they it's have a lot more to lose. Of Canada. <laughs> yeah, you're like that's where that's where it makes me pause hard. Right. Oh, I yeah. see. So for for Mel, he is like credential people with authority does you know count? It's is it like it's kind of like that sigil? But yours, it sounded like that uh, for Sean, but yours is based on experiencing in experiencing working with these uh, people. That's why you can make that judgment call. It's not yeah, just it's, because this it's, PhD guy said so. Well, <clears throat> it's the amount of experience and the amount of authority that these people have had and power, yeah. right? And people have gone mm-hmm. to them with trust and also look to them for to protect, protect lives, you know, mm-hmm. and take care of billion dollar programs, right? Uh, mm-hmm. That aren't related to anything alien just regular intelligence or government stuff or defense and things like that when they start coming out and you're like this is not a nobody right you yeah. know yeah. they have a lot to risk uh a lot, then, a lot, then a that lot makes me pause right. and go why there's so many of these people saying this right yeah like the guy that was a uh, he was uh, one of the top guys actually the top guy in the blue book uh um alan uh, heineck yeah. yeah who was he was hired to prove to disprove of ufos Mm -hmm. but in the end he said he can't do this anymore right he can't do this anymore there's like too much out there to say to say otherwise right and um, yeah uh here's another thing let's let's think uh here's another logic to that okay (laughs) so you're saying that these guys if if all these people in power by the way we want to thank mike as well for <laughs> placing a bid on Marge Wonder Woman for 75 and also placing another one on Connie's Vampirilla for 50. Oh, oh thank you. We still have a bid on um, Todd's at 50 from Stevie B. We're waiting to get a bid on Sean's Magic at uh, 75. Okay, so hmm. uh, actually, I'm sorry, Stevie B's bid is 25 on the uh, on uh, Todd's mm-hmm. sketch cover. So, and I thought there was that a 30 note, on that already. Was it on three? Okay, I will double check that. I may have missed it, but we, you know, we do try to try to verify uh, everything. But on that note, we are going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> we have to change. We know you probably get a lot of emails, but could you please make sure to sign up for our mailing list? We don't send a lot of emails, and we try not to bother you. We just want to give you the best information about all the cool stuff that's going on around here. Sign up on our website 
thexplive.com. So, the show is called The Geek Chat. And really, there's just a couple of geeks. I'm Rich. I'm Dez. And we are your hosts for this weekly guide into comic bookery and all the geeky stuff that goes with it. And that pretty much says it all. They talk about the latest movies and shows. Okay, I'll be completely honest with you. Overall, D-plus movie. So, the end... Did uh, you know who that is? That's that's She-Ra, yeah. Yes. The new number one comics of the week. We rep Sam Samuel Jackson and we rep Mace Windu. I passed on this. <laughs> I was like No regrets. No regrets. I really wanted to like this book. I really, really, <sighs> really, really, really did. Like I really did. And just chat with each other. And with you. Oh, Daniel says I dosed off with the first one. <laughs> I have zero interest in duh. The Joker Harley ship, not Harley herself. Enjoy nap for me. Yeah, yeah, this movie's gonna be rough for me to sit through, I'll be honest. The Geek Chat, Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. Just a couple of honest geeks. Let's be honest. Come on. And that is why people watch us, because we're honest. Giving their honest opinions. And the thing you always have to remember about the internet is everyone has an opinion, and they all suck. Part of the experience. According to a statistic that I just made up, people spend four hours a day changing the television channel. People who watch The Experience don't do that. Save yourself a ton of time by tuning into The Experience and enjoying our new original programming seven days a week. And then tell your friends. Think about the money they could save on batteries in the remote alone just by tuning into The Experience. Find out more by scanning the QR code below. Welcome back, everyone. Do do me a favor. Hit that follow button. Call all your friends and uh, have them watch uh, SketchUp with Mog and Mel. We've got Todd Rayner with us, Connie Jolitz, and uh, Sean Lenham, right? And they are working on some beautiful art pieces. So let's take a go around the room and take a quick look at that. Which one Uh, do you want? I'm not sure what happened to Mog. All right. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not drawing it. There you go. Okay. There's Todd. Oh, that's looking good. All right, and uh, that currently has a bit of, uh, I think that was like 30 that's on there. So we are okay. looking for the next bit of 35 awesome. on that. So if you want to bid on that, go ahead and put that into the um, comments. And there is Connie's tribute to uh, Trina Roberts with uh, Vampirilla. Trina designed the hairstyle and the costume for that uh, character. And that currently has a bit of 50. We are looking for the next bit on that with 55. And here is Sean's magic. She's almost done. Yeah, I see that there. Okay, so he's working that. That is looking for a bit of uh, 80 on there. Mm. So if you want to place a bit on that, uh, put that into the comments. I'm not sure what happened to Mar, but she is working on a Wonder Woman piece, another uh, tribute to... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Trina Robbins that currently has a bit of 75 and once she gets back we'll show that to you and we will uh, take a look at that and we've got some additional pieces that you can claim um, Sean was fortunate enough to bring four of his if we show those okay we got Spider-Man 2099 okay and these are all looking for you can just claim these in the comments, uh, it's they're fifty dollars, so they're not uh, uh, not too much out of your pocket. And uh, I don't know why it looks dark on there, Sean. Oh, it's because I'm working on a light table. All right, here we go. Boom, go. Link. Right. Okay. Link. Yay. Then we have uh, apple, apple seed. seed. There you go. And Death and dealer. Death dealer. Okay. Those are all uh, fifty dollars each on there. So if you want to 
claim yep. those, uh, just go ahead and um, put that into the uh, comments. Uh, Mog is uh, setting up to show us uh, the uh, big piece that she's uh, been working on that some of you guys have been uh, asking to see, so we'll uh, get that to you. And while we're waiting for it, let's also show the uh, piece that she uh, has up that you can claim. Not exactly cheap, but cheaper than the original. Uh, Japanese spaghetti, if sure you understand that term, why, why that's being used there. You got Ahsoka versus uh, Maul uh, back in the Shogun era. And here's Magic on an 11 by 14. White Queen at 224, 12 by 20. You can claim these into the comments. That does include shipping. Okay, so we'll take care of the shipping on those pieces uh, for those. And one of her popular pieces, the Butterfly Psylocke, 12 by 18. Okay, claim all that into the comments. Okay, so we were talking about uh, <laughs> ancient aliens. Now, somebody said that they, I was the one that led everybody into the rabbit holes, and I, I'm, I'm not sure if it was me. Was it me? I don't know. It was a little I bit. I know of it's us. not about aliens, but has anyone seen Kate Winslet's latest HBO effort, The Regime? No. I haven't seen uh, that one. Yeah, I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, either. Uh, let's see. Look, I'm looking at some of the other comments in here. No, just imagine all the stuff they're doing while they're thinking about aliens. Great diversion tactic. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Steve and Emma. Oh, Ray. somebody can see Link again from Sean. Oh, okay. Okay. Mike wants to see. Show it. that up, uh, Link. Oh, the Link. Steve and writes: Full disclosure, we'll always threaten national security. Homegrown super tech accounts for a lot of sightings and to divulge yeah. info about it would be like tipping one's hand to the enemy. And there is Link tipping his arrow to the en enemy. There you go. There you go. Yeah. $50 for that. That is cheap. Everything here tonight is cheap. There you go, uh, Mike. All right. So. Um, getting back to the finer side of, uh, of what we should be talking about, <laughs> uh, pulling up some of my notes here. Um, oh, um, here's a here's one. You're you are uh, a, a sketch card artist for Tops, Todd. Yes. How do you? Uh, for some of the ones that have been. Uh, how do you? Uh, how do you get to do that? How did that work? I kind of fell into it. <laughs> uh, I had a uh, one of my high school buddies, uh, another very talented artist, work with uh, on some earlier indie projects. Um, uh -huh. He was like, you should do this. I'm, I've been doing it for a couple of years. Here's the art director's email address. Send them some art. And at that time, it was primarily for Garbage Pail Kids, which is still a huge thing. Okay. Yeah. I had no idea. I mean, yes, I, I think a lot of us collected them as kids or knew of them when we were younger. Mm -hmm. I didn't know they were still a thing. But uh, long story short, put together some art, drew some garbage pile kids stuff and got hired in. And then it just kind of snowballed from there. Ended up working on some Star Wars, Walking Dead, Stranger Things, um, more Star Wars, more garbage pile kids. And yeah. Okay, yeah, I remember uh, Garbage Pail Kids. That's going like way back. Um, oh yeah. yeah, isn't that the same period where they did the Cabbage Babies? Yes, yeah, it Cabbage kind Patch of Kids. On that, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, and it might have been. Yeah, I see. I don't see uh, the. Um, let's see what was it now? Cabbage Patch that came out in the. Was 80s. It the 80s, right? Yeah, it was yeah. the 80s. Right. And the, um, what's the other one that we just well, talked I, about? Garbage I think Garbage Palace. Palace was 80s as well, but maybe later 80s. Was yeah. it? Somehow I thought that was earlier garbage. Because I, I do remember getting the, they used to make bubble gum packs, and that's how yes. you would like get those. Right. So yeah. you'd, buy a, you know, you'd buy a pack, it would have cards or stickers of that. With a stick of gum, yeah, right, yeah, and a stick of gum was like kind of would stick uh, to the cards. Brittle. Yeah, they would. Yeah, they would stick to cards, but they were kind of sometimes they were kind of like brittle. 
depending on like it was know, crappy dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was to put it nicely. <laughs> yeah. But they were they were cheap packs to buy at that well at, you know, yeah. at that time they were like really cheap you know, like a nickel a dime or some, uh, something like that yeah um, but yeah all right so let's see Ilya writes can you show Mark's first piece of art that's big okay we'll go through let's make a run through the uh, um, those uh, camps okay there's that first one the Japanese spaghetti that's uh, 18 by 24 uh, that's pretty huge um, that's like a little bit larger than two 11 by 17s or something like 12 by mm -hmm. yeah that's actually twice the size of an 18 by 20 18 by 12 and you know, when you think about it so that's 300 a little bit of a a, a, a deal there and uh shipping is uh being uh taken care of is included in that is this is magic 11 by 14 that's 150 the white queen is 220 uh, at 12 by 20 and then the Silent Butterfly 200 for 12 by 18. There you go. And uh, see, Vendetta writes, yeah, Garbage Pail Kids was meant to parody Garbage Patch Kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Garbage followed Cabbage Bike. Oh, okay. Very good. There you go. <clears throat> okay. Oh, here's the piece I, I did. Okay. And here's... Okay, that's the Wonder Woman. Okay, that currently has a, a bit of 75. Mm -hmm. And we are looking for the um, next bit on that of 80. Okay, that's you it. Go. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. So Ilya writes, uh, he's offering two sixty nine for the uh, spaghetti. That's a nice, nice number uh, there, Ilya. Uh, <laughs> kind of, we kind of went down on it already, but you know what? Uh, for you, I'll go down to like two eighty on that. <laughs> Let me know if that's good. And uh, sh like I said, shipping is included oh, on that. <laughs> so I see shipping is included. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, and uh, it's gonna. It's not yeah. going to be that cheap, but we'll take care of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so there's the big piece that people were asking to see on that. Uh, Kratos versus a Wolverine. And nice. Mark is kind of like, she's worked a lot on the background now. She's uh, trying to get the um, detail on that stuff. And hopefully that gets finished uh, Later this week, mm -hmm. yeah. Because because what do you have to work on that? You've got you got the trees on there. You got the castle on top. You got to um, throw in the flames. Mm -hmm. Work on the chain a bit. Oh shit! The All special around. effects. Yeah, the, the special, special effects. effects here uh, or last make them look and, uh, battle and... damaged. Yeah, because yeah, all, all that. that you kind of can. Only, it's better to do all those details at the end. Mm -hmm. Even like the highlights of everything, right? And it's that's um, at the end, so let's see what size was this again? No, 20, this 24 is like, by 36. Uh, more than half the size of a door, so yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Wow, okay, all right. So, yeah, so if you're if somebody wants to do um sketch cards as well like for for the other artists out there because i know like mm -hmm. we've had some other guys on here do like sketch cards we had um uh like don don win does those um mm -hmm. i think walden wong does that a famous uh popular inker um who else um don walker as well uh, all those guys uh, uh do those i know don win gets a kick out of uh doing them because he, he'll sell those packs uh at his booth and watch uh, people open up to try and get the like the chase cards and stuff. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wanted to do that, what is the um, what is a way how they can uh, get into that? It would be through 
from what I understand, just the general like you know artists at tops dot com or whatever is the you know the current you now they they kind of tops has gone through several art directors since I've been with them. Um, so it's kind of like every art director has a new email and you never know. Um, but I would say, you know, reach out to anybody that you know that does it. Um, and, you know, sometimes they're a little guarded as far as like giving out the email address. But I think there's like a general artist at tops.com that, you know, people can email. Mm, okay. All right. So basically, you know, just kind of like search for it and, and see. Yeah. And, and it, it's kind of hit or miss, honestly. Like, I mean, my friend did it, so he kind of put in a good word or, you know, he knew the art director. Um, and there's been other people that, that have reached out to me, like, how did you do this? And I was like, oh, you know, just email this person, send them some samples. And they end up getting on kind of the list, right? So there's this massive email list of 200 plus artists that Tops will have work on various sets. But uh, do, is it worth to pay? Do they pay good? Uh, not really, but it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's sketch cards. It really, it's if is it worth the pay? It depends on how much you put into the card. You know, I don't spend hours on one card. Uh, I, I never will because, you know, um, it's really only a few bucks a card. You know, and if you oh, go yeah. to any other uh, sketch card company, I mean they'll pay a few bucks you know here or there it, mm -hmm. it's subjective but they're sketch cards and i approach it as like sketch covers i approach it as a loose sketch you know somewhat finished it's not a full rendered art piece right 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 it's, right. it's loose yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it's kind of like us too you know you're gonna size up okay All right so you want you want this character and you're willing to pay this much okay Mm -hmm. Well, based on uh, kind of like what we're uh, uh, charging there, then we're going to put in this much time, you know. So if it's at, yeah. let's say if it's like 50 bucks, right? And maybe, you know, we'll put it in like an hour and a half. Or if you right. go, uh, if you're going to pay uh, $100 and, you know, maybe we'll go like two and a half or, you know, or, or more. So it, it all depends. The more you right. want to see, you know, then you're going to have to pay more. You know, so, yeah. so you're going to get what yeah, you pay And that's for. how sketch cards are, you know. Um, and, and you'll, we'll have like, you know, what we they call like artist proofs or artist returns where those obviously demand, they kind of command more money, especially oh, with yeah. garbage pop kids. I mean, yeah. that collector's group, they pay, you know, several hundred hours. So a lot of the artists will end up doing full paintings for these sketch cards. Um, you know, they'll do mixed media and, and it just depends on what the person's willing to pay. Right. Do you guys, do you, uh, Todd, do you like working small or large? I prefer larger. I, I know mm -hmm. when I do, um, when I did ice pick, I did, um, as far as my research, I know a lot of this is transitioned to, to digital, you know, artwork now yeah. and you can kind of work any size for the most yeah. part, but I, I still prefer the traditional 11 by 17, um, blue lined artwork that you know the, the pages that are kind of have the blue lines on it that show you like safe areas and working area type of stuff but i typically like larger hmm. interesting okay uh thanks for, uh, for that mike we got a, a bid on sean's piece for 80 dollars now so everybody is on the board thank you uh, guys for uh, all your support mm -hmm. on that okay oh one, one thing unique about sean's uh art sketch that he's doing mm -hmm. i don't think sean mentioned it is he's actually using the old fashioned uh, Japanese manga. They do the screen tones, you know, and ha all those like tones. And he's actually cutting it and gluing it on top. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, like those gray stuff. So you literally are having a uh, screen tone on the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, something that's not that's cool. used as, as much as uh, it used to be before. It's, yeah, and, and those things are kind of expensive now because they're so um, limited, obsolete yeah. now. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it used to be cheap, but not anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people yeah. kind of like make their own now, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, they're, they're kind of fun and I can see the use uh, uh, in them, but yeah. But now with like Photoshop in place, and a lot of people tend not to uh, uh, use those as much. Yeah. Yeah, and and I still do traditional artwork. Like I still, um, 
pencil, paper, ink, you know, I don't, I'll do my layouts digitally because I feel it's definitely quicker than to try yeah. to like lay everything out. I'm at that stage, I'm still pretty rough and it's easier to proportion and, and stuff like that panel layouts when you're doing a uh, actual interiors. Um, but I, I still love the traditional, I keep all my pencils, I'll scan those in and print those out blue lines and then ink my blue lines. So fans can have mm -hmm. pencils or inks, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and for a traditional artist, that's a good thing because it's a, it's a good way to, uh, um, uh, maximize uh, what you can uh, offer and, mm -hmm. and uh, what you can make on a piece. So that way nothing goes like totally wasting. It allows you yeah. to attain uh, the money that uh, will make it worthwhile to keep on uh, doing this. Right? Cause if you didn't do that then, and with what you're able to uh, get now, and I'm not just talking about Todd, but uh, everybody that's in the industry, uh, especially in the independent market, um, it's not, you're not going to get paid as much as you need to get uh, mm -hmm. in order to uh, make it if that's your sole uh, income. So uh, something that you got to uh, balance out right, and, and try to maximize and monetize uh, uh, what you're doing. All right. So Derek writes, Todd has some great OA for sale on his site. There you go. Okay. So again, you can check out Todd's Thanks. site, pick up the books that he's got. He's got a full set of uh, ice pick out there. Annabelle just finished uh, issue three. Uh, so you can pick up the first two and uh, get on uh, uh, number three as well. And when are you <laughs> going to be launching the next one? How quick do you launch the uh, next one? That's a great question. <laughs> I uh, It, it kind of depends on the artists, uh, to be honest, and, and not to throw them under the bus. They do mm -hmm. like, the, I, I feel the interior art on Annabelle is leaps and bounds better than what I do. And it, it when I first saw Sergio, the artist for Annabelle, how he drew Annabelle Icepick and um, Luke is the third character. Uh, it was, I was just like, this is the guy. I, I, I want this guy, pay him what he wants. Um, oddly enough, like all three of the artists that are on Annabelle are in South America, like Brazil, Mexico, or yeah. Argentina. Okay. And um, I, we're about halfway done with the pencils. So I, I'm hoping within maybe another month to finish those up. I'd like to stay on like a three to four month schedule. I think that's, I'd like to go quicker, but then again, like, I'm a one man show, like all this comes, mm -hmm. I, I pay for all this out of pocket, right? I pay for yeah. everything, printing artists, all that cover artists. And mm -hmm. like you mentioned, some of the cover artists I have, I mean, they're not always cheap, <laughs> you know? So you got and, a lot. <laughs> yeah. And, and, but I'm also, because I'm an artist, like I respect yeah. that. Like when yeah. I ask someone and they give me a price, I, I never, and I never will negotiate them down. Like that's your price and I will pay what you you tell me. And if it's yeah. too much, then I just, I'll wait till I have that, the money in place to pay mm -hmm. you because I think every artist deserves a fair price that how they value their art, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I would hope by like June, July, maybe start to hear kind of whispers or, or maybe I'll start posting more about how far we're along and, and what we'll do. Um, and then I'll, I'm also working on the next book after Annabelle, which is kind of like the third story trilogy of this whole, you know, characters. Um, and that's going to be Luke. Um, and that's going to be a horror themed book that's coming out later this year. Mm, okay. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Ha -ha. Uh, Man, oh, nice. Connie is quick. Look at that. Okay. Vampirella. <laughs> nice. It's a shame that the camera is a little bit uh, blurry because you can't see the cross hatching and everything in it. It's unfortunate. And that's what makes it interesting. Okay. And that currently so, has a bid of 50 from Mike uh, Asbill, who's been killing it every week, bidding on uh, everybody's uh, pieces and buying art. Okay. So Mike yeah. has also claimed a link from uh, Sean. Noise. So thank you for that. Thank you very much. All right. Let me just get this down here. There we go. Pretty. All right. And, uh, Mom, Pretty. your Wonder Woman is done? Yeah. Was that the. Okay. That was okay. So that one's done. You, uh, see again? Yeah. Okay, Wonder, Woman. Wonder Woman. Wonder <laughs> Woman. 
<laughs> yeah, that's awesome, Vancouver Bear. That's the uh, from the theme song from the original Wonder Woman series back in the I 70s. Really do you like a brunette? No, no, I never understood that. When they say brunette, mm -hmm. it's not means your brown head, right? Is anybody with dark hair? Yeah, yeah, ah, pretty okay, much yeah. dark hair, other than that, red hair. What about people with <laughs> black hair? So, black yeah. hair is called a what brunette? about them? Uh, I call it black hair, but some yeah, people categorize so, it under brunette. Okay, yeah. well, I yeah. like girls with dark hair. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. It's I weird because like they have this, uh, uh, this category for brownish red hair, which is uh, uh, auburn. Yeah, yeah it's okay. That's okay. Like okay. Go. reddish brown. No. No, raven yeah. haired. Yes, I want, I want like, like dark hair. Sometimes, don't they call? Is that what they call? Sometimes called strawberry blonde. Is that the same no, thing? Strawberry that blonde hair, like, lighter like, uh, straw blonde. Yeah, yeah. and that, that never made sense to me either. Yeah, I always get confused <laughs> with that. Yeah. Well, either way, I think I don't know. I just like dark haired. Um, because I think recently we saw a, a TV series. What was that? Uh, it was based on a game. Um, Fallout. Fallout. Fallout yeah. Oh, Fallout. that new one. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I saw the actress, and she her picture profile is just blonde and blue eyes, but then in Fallout she's just dark haired, and I was like, wow, you look so good. You know, she looks so much better dark haired. I, I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> and she's got huge eyes too. I noticed that that actress yeah. of her eyes were really like boom, and I was wondering if they digitally enhanced those because damn. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You're right. She kind of reminded me of that actress who played Zoe. Is, is, is her name Zoe something? Were you talking about the actress named Zoe? She was. Deschanel. She, yes, Ella she Perlmo. Was... She's a what? living anime character. <laughs> <laughs> Ella? <laughs> Ella Pu Pernel? Pernel. Hmm. Pernel? Yeah. Okay, just have to add one more thing. All right, let's. Um, okay, so we saw. Mog's Wonder Woman. Yeah. Uh, Sean's magic is there. We yep. saw Connie's. Todd, let's see your uh, sketch cover. How's that coming? Oh yeah, out? come on. There you, there you go. Oh, Very dude. blue, but okay. And that does have a bit on there. My gosh, are you gonna uh, color uh, it or is black and white? Like, I would say black and white. I, I, I actually, I really like black and white. I, sometimes I do like um, a spot color where I'll mm -hmm. do like just a color um mm. but I, I do like black and white for some reason <laughs> yeah i like pencils i like sketches even if it's color mm. i like color sketches so yeah. yeah yeah i do like to see pencils i like to see the uh raw i like, pencils. I like seeing the yeah, strokes a lot the mm. yeah. you like the, the strokes huh? you like strokes <laughs> <laughs> okay Mark, yeah. let's not go there <laughs> oh sorry okay yeah. love is <laughs> And see, JD's asking, Todd, is there a story behind the axe <laughs> on your wall? Um, there's two stories, but I'll make them quick. Um, the the certificate that is hanging above the axe is actually, um, I'm a certified axe thrower. <laughs> I, I, I use that term very loosely. <laughs> so <Okay>. there's, a, <laughs> there's a Renaissance fair in, in close to Seattle, Washington. And me and my wife and my sister, brother-in-law and her family went and they had ax throwing. It, it, it's an awesome <laughs> Renaissance fair. I love Renaissance fairs. We don't dress up, but we, we do go. And my brother-in-law, I think he um, his eyes got bigger than he could perform, I guess. I don't know, but he's like, we should do this, right? I'm like, all right, fine. So we do. I hit every single bullseye, he misses them. So I get the certificate to say that I'm a professional, you know, I'm a certified axe thrower. The axe below it is kind of funny um, because my wife is a huge Excalibur fan, uh, 1981 Excalibur. And I found a swordsmith up in Canada that made a actual battle ready Excalibur replica sword. Wow. So. I ordered that for her for this last Christmas. Um, it's to scale. It's a legit short sword. It came with a sheath, and it's very sharp. How long is it? Kind of heavier than I thought. 
50, How long maybe is it? 52 inches or 48. It's a good size sword. It's hanging on our wall <laughs> in the living room. It's like four Wait, and a half it's feet. legit steel? Like legit metal steel? Oh, it's, it's yes. You could go yeah. sword fighting with it and you will cut people in half. It is very sharp and, and heavy. Um, and so the, the guy, when I ordered the sword, the axe that's behind me was part of a gift from that company, that armory in Canada. Uh -huh. And it's a battle ready uh, axe. It's a huge, I mean, you can see it's pretty long handle. Um, it's sharp. It's a really awesome axe. So I was like, hey, I'll hang that below my certification of axe throwing. <laughs> So okay. what were you do? Did you do baseball like when you were growing up? I mean, I'm trying to find I the did. relation to that sudden genius uh, skill. You didn't skill. The I did. I, I played baseball um, for four years. Okay, and know, then like, I'm, did you play high high school. darts? Did you do a lot of darts? Uh, no, I do like darts. I never played like amateur professionally. Um, but I also played basketball too. Uh, I, I was kind uh, of always, I mean, I played okay. sports growing up. Were you um, a Viking in a past life? I think so. I, think I wish. Was. That would be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I would or, love that. <laughs> or maybe I Native guess. Americans, because don't yeah, they, right? don't yeah. Native Tomahawk. Americans throw axes a lot like yeah. crazy and then go, Tomahawk. and then sometimes yeah. like catch it midair. Yeah. It's like, oh, thanks for this axe. And then throw it right back yeah. at you. You know, what's, you know what's becoming Plus popular? Americans. Axe bars, axe throwing bars are becoming popular. Ooh. There's like oh, yeah. two oh, over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drinking and throwing axes. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah oh, dude. Right. What yeah. could go wrong? It's it's that's replacing safe. it's replacing darts. <laughs> yeah, right. I was like, okay, I, let's I do more, it. I think more than that. What would I? I saw this once in yeah. Japan. This was like 20 years ago on news in Japan. This was when I used to live um, near Osaka. And they were doing this. Oh, this is a new trend where next to the bars, they're creating something called um, like a bottle throwing thing. So they would, you can have the, you print out the picture of the people you hate. And then they were showing all these ladies <laughs> with their boss pictures, pasted yeah. on the uh, silhouette of a cool. man. And then they would throw glass bottles. And while they're doing it, they're like screaming, like, ah! you know, like fuck <laughs> out, you know? <laughs> Yeah, they have and like then anger issues. After so, so you have to pay per bottle, right? So mm. one lady was doing going through a whole crate, and then they <laughs> waited, and then they interviewed her after. It's like, oh, so um, can you tell me why you do this? I mean, it's so obvious. It's a dumb question. And uh, how how do you feel now? Does it help? Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna come here like at least once a week. So yeah. <laughs> I want to do oh, that. Yeah, that there's, uh, there's actually like anger rooms. There's uh, uh, yeah. um, places that have trash like TVs or, or uh, other breakable uh, electronic stuff mm -hmm. that uh, you can go in there with a sledgehammer or whatever I think and just start breaking stuff. So they give you a goggles yeah. and yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I see. I see places down. like that. There's uh, those places that aren't like that now. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I also think... have oh, go ahead. a Sorry. samurai sword. <laughs> oh my god! Hey, what is oh, that yeah. picture behind you? That man uh, leaping in air. Leaping in air. The picture behind on the right side of the. Oh, axe. that looks like a Spider-Man kind of, like a Spider-Man uh, flying. Where, where am I at here? Uh... Yeah, on the wall. Behind <laughs> it's all backwards. That yeah, picture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Spider Man. Yeah, my um, my sister's kind of crafty, I will say, um, and uh, she did. I will go this way. She did a Batman, Spider Man, and a Wolverine kind of like silhouettes. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Oh. So. so, what's the story of the Japanese samurai sword? Uh, you know, just uh, you know, big fan of Japanese culture and. Um, mm. Godzilla, obviously, who's not a fan mm. of Godzilla. Um, and, and that was a, a present from my wife. So she's like, you know, I know you really like, <laughs> we haven't been to Japan yet. I really would love to go to Japan. Oh. Um, I don't know what I'd eat, but, you know, I'm, I'm sure I can find good food over there. Hmm. You but know, just, Japan just turns I'm, out, let's go ahead. Sorry. 
No, no, please. Oh, no, I was just going to say um, Japan has, amongst Asia, the top most Michelin star restaurants yeah. in Asia, right? Okay. And turns out most of all that, except for maybe two or three, all of them are French restaurants in Japan. Oh. So the Michelin star one. So um, you might find a lot of eclectic uh, Western food that you might enjoy. You mm. don't have to deprive yourself if you're uh, picky about your palate. So a little bit. I, I've seen some food in Japan, and, and I don't know if I could eat some of that. <laughs> mm. Some of the more exotic foods, I would say, yeah. that's yeah. not Americanized. Oh, but when I lived in Sasebo, okay. the best Italian food I ever had was in Japan. Yeah, right. They they had yeah. Pinocchio, and there was like another place, but. One yeah, one place the dude like the chef like trained in Italy, and I was like, no doubt, what? yeah, this is wild. It was yeah, oh my god, so good, so good, yeah. So they go to the nth degree when it comes to like their food. Um, yeah, the only thing that was that was know. sad to me is that they didn't have a lot of spicy food, right? Like if you had okay. if you found no, spicy food, it wasn't like because the Japanese made it, it was because mm -hmm maybe like i went to a thai restaurant there and it was like mm -hmm. you know they they moved to japan and they were all thai but yeah. the, the food was fantastic but i mean yeah. but yeah they they don't really like spicy food too much oh but, sean speaking off why. have you noticed their version of spicy food is even milder than the american versions yeah really yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. right it's yeah. that it's like to that degree guys like yeah. they can't handle the spice okay. so that's odd to me because wasabi is uh, kind of on the spicy side, different kind of spice. You know that is true. Hmm. Yeah, that is true. But every time I've went to any other restaurant, it was just like, not, like I went to a Korean restaurant, and oh, I was God. like, this just travesty. isn't, this just isn't spicy. It's just not. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's, nope. what's going on? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Give me more. You know, yeah. my wife is like, this is not right. What's going <laughs> on here? So Todd. <laughs> Did the pickiness came after you married your wife or it was since you were a kid, the pickiness retained or have you just improved? Like, what is it um, with your palate? Oh, no. I, I, well, growing up in Ohio, I, you know, it's um, very Midwestern food. It's very steak and potatoes. I, so I just mm. didn't, I didn't really, um, growing up, we never ventured out outside of a lot of food. I will say though, my, my wife is a foodie. She loves food. So um, she's kind of like half Italian and Sicilian mixed in there. So, I mean, she can nice. cook some really good stuff. And because she likes a lot of variety of food. So since we've been together, which March was 25 years. So, I mean, she's really opened up, you know, like sushi and, and pho and all these other like different foods that I would have never experience so uh yeah i just heard horror stories of like people going to japan and they're like yeah there's like the little markets you go down the street and they're like frying up like random you know animals and creatures like, and little things yeah, that you don't yeah. see in america i think that's more yeah, like china i even yeah, yeah. well that too yeah i don't think yeah. we ever really ran, ran into anything like that when i lived there it's more okay that's good to know like more like I mean, takoyaki is like the closest, but I mean, takoyaki is just squid and mayonnaise and yeah. But you know, they say squid; yeah. be, they're, they're being super cheap. You only get maybe yeah. one little chunk of squid inside. It's mainly all starch. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's why I don't like uh, eating those uh, anymore. Yeah, it's they're just, being yeah. They being say octopus, yeah. octopus well, like balls, but actually, you don't even get any octopus hardly. You know, maybe yeah. one or two chunks, and then everything is just starch. Okay, let's go through. Uh, Mike is asking me to see these pieces again, so we'll go through them one more time. Uh, uh, which, which one was, first? Uh, Canvas prints. Uh, there you go. Okay, so the spaghetti western, I think, you know, you've got magic. Uh, it's available here at a, at one fifty, and then the um, white queen. Here it is. Uh, that's available. That's a that's a fairly a new piece. We haven't really put out uh, that much of a. Of that white queen, so that there is available. Uh, these prices are marked down from what we have them at. 
Um, and that price does include shipping. So you're getting a somewhat of a, a discounted deal on there. Okay. And there's the, uh, one of our popular pieces is the Psylocke that, um, by 18 or 200. Yeah, when you see the white queen up close, you're not going to see it here though. But um, uh, what everybody likes on that uh, that white queen piece is is her eyes, right? When you see it, the, the eyes just kind of like capture and hold you. Uh, anyway, so that's what everybody's saying uh, about that piece. Let's show up to Sean's pieces as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's run through his. There you go. Uh, we got magic, the link. Magic piece. Okay. okay, the link is already sold. Okay. About that, uh, and here's Def Dealer. Okay, these are all fifty bucks a piece, and there is a piece that I like, Apple Seed, that comes back. That goes back to the time uh, really that cool. I liked. Most of and then sure. Spider Man mm -hmm. twenty ninety nine. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. And what is the Steve? I, I forgot I missed this the first time, but Steve was asking. This is the second time he's asking. What is that in the uh, speech bubble for Magic? Oh. I just started putting like uh, just little designs and speech bubbles. I don't know why. It's just a <laughs> thing I started doing. It looks like a spell that she's trying to. She's thinking I mean, about her conjuring. Sound, yeah, like that or like mandalas. I started putting them in my pieces lately, and I like it a lot. So it's a thing that I'm doing. Uh, it looks like a dream catcher. It's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure about a mandala, but yeah, that's a yeah, look, it yeah. looks more like a dream catcher to me. Too. Yeah, yeah, I, I like can agree with that in there for sure. Yeah. There you go. Something, something I think I understand because she's what she got her powers from like hell, right? Yes, so esoteric occult, like something symbol so symbolizes that. I, I can see where you're coming from, so I think yeah. it's great. Yeah, yeah. And also magic, come on. So that's why you put the Pentagon. So great job. <laughs> that is the true name of Lockheed. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh, a good yeah. one. <laughs> Lockheed's Can't hanging out with uh, Shadow it. Cat a lot more yeah. now, right? Like, yeah. yeah. But, well, but I Lockheed... always associated him with magic. I don't no, know. Lockheed. When Lockheed. Uh, Kitty just Pride. Came out, right? Yeah. yeah. Lockheed that's was, always, Pride? Uh, was being with mm -hmm. uh, Kitty Pride, Shadow Cat. So what, what the heck is doing with magic now? There's no, no he, yeah. I think he spent time with both of them. But yeah, he I, did. But a majority of time, if you go back to the beginning, a majority of the time has been with Kitty Pride. He was like on another planet, right? He's like a an alien, I think. And uh, like he followed them, and <laughs> oh, no. like yeah, yeah, he's, he was a dragon alien. Oh no, no, back. no, no! I'm telling you the story. <laughs> I was just telling you the, the story I remember uh, reading on Wikipedia. Because I thought about putting Lockheed on here, but I was like, eh, I don't know. He's doing more of the Shadow Cat thing, so I don't want to. Going people. back to um, what have... Todd said when he was talking about Ice Pick, mm -hmm. his uh, story, it kind of made me think about because, like he said, he was gone for three years and everybody assumed he was dead and suddenly he shows up, right? To the wife. Yeah. So, I mean, if I heard you correctly, um, how would you guys feel? It was it was three issues. Oh, three, oh sorry, three, three issues. issues. Yeah. So how would you guys feel? Like say your spouse was reported dead in an accident, right? Mm -hmm. And then, so you're like, oh, like this, this uh, B is dead, man. So, so yeah. either are you gonna wait loyally? I mean, not okay, actually, you don't wait anymore because that person's dead. So what, what you're saying is, you're the guy. No, 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 no. Here's a question. <laughs> Sorry, Connie. Sorry, it. Connie. When you're the guy who died, right? You die, right? And you're like, okay, yeah. I can't wait to get back to my wife. Or well, if you're a woman, my husband. And then finally, after three years, you come back, you knock on the door, and your spouse, your other half. Is with another person now, yeah. Right. Yeah. You, so my question is, would you be okay with it or not okay? I don't think you have a choice. Depends. Yeah. Yeah, it depends. Uh, anyway, uh, it is about eight fifty already. So oh. let's go ahead and uh, spin for our giveaways. <laughs> First thing we're giving away is ice pick number one. We want to thank Todd for uh, putting up the uh, free giveaways uh, tonight. Oh, okay. Yay! Uh, and, and don't forget to visit nice. the website. 
And uh, if you do win this, uh, uh, fill out that magic form so that way we know uh, who's getting out what. All right, so we're going to roll the die. Roll the wheel now for uh, Ice Pick. Let's see who our lucky winner is for tonight on Ice Pick. That is going to go to, drum roll, Derek Neiman. <gasps> Derek, you finally Thank won you something. Good job. Yeah, 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 well, I don't know if that's a – Derek has been a good supporter of the show, so I do appreciate that. Okay, here's the final. And the next one is for oh. uh, Annabelle number one, actually. Yes. So Annabelle. we're going to roll for that. Ooh, Vampirella is looking hot there. Yeah. Yes. Here we go. Our second away, Annabelle number one is going to go to Sticks Boy Three. 73. Sticks Boy. Yeah, no, didn't. I think he won last week, too. <laughs> Good job. Good job. There you go. So we have our two winners. Uh, you've got uh, a few more minutes to get uh, any more bids in or to make uh, any claims. Uh, thank you. I want to thank our winners uh, for that night. And uh, thank you to uh, Todd for uh, coming on to the show. Don't forget to visit his website and uh, place your claims on those uh, comics that he has there. And, uh, Ice Pick and Annabelle. Get all caught up on yeah. that before he jumps into the next series uh, later on this year. And you know, um, next week. Oh. Oh, yeah. Sorry. You, you know what was incredible when Stick Boy won that? I think he just put in the expendable hashtag <laughs> just before you said oh. that and he just got it. It's like, what? Good job. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Jen is uh, from Hawaii. Thank you, Jen. Big mm -hmm. supporter uh, of mm -hmm. ours. Mm -hmm. Saying that all the artwork here is beautiful. Yeah, thank you. And don't forget, um, Mark and I will not be here next week. We will be at C2E2. However, in our absence, we do have Philip Jin will be here with Stephen Yu. And they were going to be getting into their Asian battle. I'm not exactly sure where that's going to be. So I don't know if that's going to be like a fight night or something, but you're going to want to like tune in and see what that's in. I'm going to, I'll be checking in and on them just to see that they're not getting too out of hand. <laughs> And what they have in store for the show, I don't know. It's a surprise. Ninja stars? I, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm telling you, get, you, get your fried noodles and, and one ton ready. Heck yeah. What if they can't cook? That's asking well, a lot. Even actually, I can't make wonton and fried noodles. Well, I know that both of them can cook. Okay. And Philip has been at our house and he has cooked for us. So, you know, we can't. We can't no, say but that you just told that. the viewers to get their wontons and fried noodles ready. Yeah, <laughs> to, to, you know, to throw. <laughs> yeah, but they, what if they just can't get that? You got to cook it. It's, that's a lot of work. DoorDash. Yeah, you can you can just go out and. <laughs> oh, I like that uh, DoorDash. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, DoorDash. So practical. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. You, you just that, go and pick it up. You know. So practical, man. <laughs> call it in. <laughs> call it in and pick it up. You know, uh, on your way home yeah. or something. I don't know. Panda Express. <laughs> Todd, the uh, Viking if you slash can cook, then Native you can American. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Super pragmatic. All right. A couple more minutes just to get any final bids in. But currently we have uh, Sean's Magic is at $80 from Mike Asbill. Thank also, you, Mike, Mike has, a, uh, has a claim on uh, Steve's on Connie's uh, Vampirilla for 50 And Stevie B has a hold on Todd's sketch for uh, 25 as well. And, yeah, so that, that – or was it – it's 30 actually. Yeah, I believe that. So that's 30 on that. And Derek has 80 bucks on the Wonder Woman. All right. So I want to thank everybody again for uh, coming on the show tonight. Uh, thank you, Todd. We definitely want to have you back. Mm -hmm. It's been a yeah, fun Todd, show. Pleasure. Um, Connie, yeah, from Hawaii, thank you for Connie, uh, joining us uh, early. Sean, thank you for coming in in the pinch. No uh, problem. Yeah, Fang Fang was having problems, so she's not going to be able to. Uh, she couldn't make it in today. Thank we got to have the alien show, man. 
<laughs> you know what? <laughs> Sean's alien show. So oh, while you were know. well, while you were well, talking, it'll, be a, it'll be a three-hour show though. So no, uh, no, you okay. should uh, invite for that. I I know that uh, no. uh, in the one on one on one tales you had the uh, um uh what was his name um uh, Gary. Uh, what was I don't know, Gary. Sean. It, the moment we do that, I don't think we'll maybe have two people watching. <laughs> Hell yes, I'll watch oh, it man. just for entertainment. No, <laughs> uh, really uh, you'll be it. part of the guest. <laughs> so, so you, oh, okay. Because you seem oh, no, to I'll like that to, as to, well. So I do. I, I'll have to do some more research so I can bring something good to the table. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, Sean, I'm gonna. Ask you to probably like maybe fill in uh, for us when we're not here. I think so. Okay. When that happens, you can call it <laughs> the ancient aliens. It's the ancient aliens show. You guys you thought go. we were going to talk about something else. Nope, it's just me <laughs> talking and, about and, and something. And everybody no has to draw some kind of alien. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So comic book related alien, Martian man. I like that. Draw aliens. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, what's yeah? Because Starfire, yeah. Star, yeah. Okay, Silver Surfer. Thor, there's there's a lot Mars of aliens attacks. that you can, you can draw. You know, yeah. you know who I always almost everybody in Legion of Superheroes is an alien. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Superman, <laughs> Superman's an alien. Yeah, Superman's there's an alien. Superman. There you go. I, I want to do the Predator versus the the alien. Oh, the yeah. actual, yeah. actual movie Alien, Alien. Yeah. Predator versus, that would be okay. badass. And they just announced that they're going to do an X Men versus uh, Aliens limited series coming out uh, this summer what? by your one what? of your favorite artists, Mog. Which one? There's so many. Uh, but God, I forgot the. It starts with an S. S? Yeah. Yeah, it's xenomorphs that they're calling the aliens from uh, Aliens. Yep. Instead of aliens. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. All right. Well, time is up, everybody. Once again, thank you for uh, joining us. Don't uh, forget to fill out that magic form that's going to be uh, coming up there so that way you know where to send everything. And if you have not received any of your pieces from the show, uh, make sure you hit me up uh, with the email that was posted earlier. And I will go ahead and follow up on that. I did follow up on D already. And I uh, and um and Trish, so hopefully later on I will hear the messages from them and get that up to you. Everything as far as like shipping goes, everything is pretty much caught up except for this uh, this week. So if you haven't gotten anything yet, you should be able to, should be getting it very soon. Okay, and everything from us uh, this week will of course is going to be mailed a little bit later since we are getting ready for the show. Uh, but we haven't had any complaints about uh, people not getting things from us, right? So, but if you haven't got something for, from the other people that've been on here, uh, we'll go ahead and follow up on you. Thanks again for joining us. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Did you know that Arthur, King of the Britons, and Monty Python and the Holy Grail was played by a famous Graham? Check out another famous Graham by following our Instagram 